Hiya, this is Coach Tony Morgan of the Masterful Engineer program. And today's ball, what we're looking at, is a semi friendly format 100D. And today's video, we're going to be taking a tour around the boiler, looking mainly at its operation and what happens. So, one of my trainee engineers with me, Peter, is going to be asking some questions about the boiler, and you can see. If you know some of the answers to these questions and we're just going to discuss the sequence of operation with this boiler now firstly this is a combination boiler which is a standard efficiency so it's not a condensing boiler it's a standard efficiency which means that the burner is an aerated burner just like on a gas cooker premixes with the um, air round the burner and then burns goes through the main heat exchanger at the top and out the flume so that's the operation of how the products of combustion, products of combustion are being expelled from the boiler so now we'll just go through the sequence and show what happens in central heating mode and in hot water mode When we run the hot water tap, the water flows through into the water section of the diverter valve. It's difficult to see, but that's the micro switch at the end of the diverter valve. So that moves, makes that micro switch on the end of the diverter. At the same time, it shuts off the port, which is going to the heat and return. So the priming water from the main heat exchanger which is up here sends its power from the primary heat exchanger into the hot water heat exchanger here to heat up the hot water at the same time you've got cold water coming into the plate heat exchanger and then going into hot water from the transfer of heat from the primary water at the same time that's happening, you've got this sensor here, which is the main flow pipe and the ovary thermostat. They got the calling. Once that takes place, the fan will run. The air pressure switch will be made, provided it's in the right position. Send the signal down to the ignition control box, which is this blue one. That will then send a spark up this lead here and then once the spark takes place the gas valve will be opened. This will be energised by again the ignition control box which is connected to the gas valve as you can see. The gas is released, the spark lights the gas and then the, burn, the burner is burning. At the same time you've got this flame um, dissection lead which is on the end of the probe that monitors the flame keeps the ignition going and then you've got your hot water right Pete you've got any questions you want to ask on that right, okay what did you say this was Tony this is the ignition control box okay so does it go to the board for the ignition control box or go straight to here well what you've got You've got that ignition control box, yeah. and behind here, yeah. in this part, in this section, you've got the driver board. So there's another PCB in there. So you've got two boards. This sensor, this goes to the driver board, which is behind here. You've got your potentiometers for heat and hot water here. They also go into that board. So that will send power to this ignition box. So the ignition box controls the fan, ignition, gas valve. The PCB behind here controls like your low voltage things like your thermistors. And also it will power, as I said, the ignition control box. So that's where the fan, as I said, 
ignition takes place. Is that okay? Got any so more questions? Yeah, yeah. Please have enough of yeah. Have you got another question you want to ask? No, yeah, no. So I'm I'm quite happy with that, mate. You know what I mean? That's it. Uh... Okay. Regarding the pump as well, the pump that's fed from the driver board as well. So that'll do. Yeah, that'll do the fan. I saw the pump as well. On the gas valve, which I pointed out before, you've got this part of the gas valve, which is called the modulating coil here. These two wires are in low voltage. You get around about 28 volts DC, which energizes this solenoid. So this will govern the high and low burner pressure. You can set the burner pressure with the maximum is set with a nut, outer nut and the minimum is set with a plastic red one. To set the maximum minimum, first thing you do, to do the minimum, we take that off there like that, that will then put it to minimum. You do this with the hot water running and then adjust it with the red screw. It's round about 1.5, 1.8 millibar on minimum. So you set that with the hot water running and then you attach this wire like that and then that will set it into maximum what you then need is your screwdriver on there and a spanner on here and then adjust the nuts you check that as per the data plate and then you I think it's about 10.5 millibar you got a question on that yeah so so obviously you're gonna have to have a u-gate attached on here when you're doing that yeah yes Yes, what you will do, good question. This is your outlet on your gas valve. You'll attach a U-gauge on that, and then you'll be able to see the adjustment on your U-gauge. Yeah, is that okay? That's fine enough. Now for the heating, everything will work just more or less what I just said. This for Mister works for heating and hot water. It does both. That's your main overheat thermostat. You've also got another thermostat at the back there. Now for the heating, the demand is done via the timer and any external controls like a room thermostat. Your selector switch has got to be on for heating. And your thermostat on the front of your bar's got to be turned up. Once they're all on, everything else will be the same. The diverter valve will be at rest, so you're just going to go around the heating. Any questions on that? No, that's, that's absolutely clear to me, Tony. Right, on the um, central heating, on this particular boiler, it's a range rateable boiler, <clears throat> so on the older ones like this, standard efficiency, yeah. you could range rate it depending on what the heating load was. So if you look closely, I pull the central heating knob, knob cover off, you can see the A and B. These are like potentiometers what are on the PCB, and you can set the maximum output for the radiators via this. So that's the thing what you do for the heating. So on the adjustments, you've got two adjustments here. So on the A, that's to adjust your ignition burner pressure. And the B is to adjust the central heating output. So there are your adjustments on this part for your heating. Right, I'm going to now discuss about fault finding. In my experience, I've used a simple logic as a way to overcome problems in fault finding. So what you can do, if you get like, say, 
a complaint they're getting no hot water but the heating's working okay if you use simple logic by thinking well the fan's working because the heat's coming on so the fan's working air pressure switch is working ignition box is working air pressure switch eliminate all of them because you know that side of it's all working and then you're just going to focus on the hot water side so you focus what the things in hot water are going to stop it from working so think of that if you've got any comments on that I'd like to hear from you you can drop them a comment below and we'll get back to you okay you've got any questions on that yeah so um like we discussed earlier you see you've got no hot water um or it's intermittent um the first thing i would look for is the diverter valve um and i put my clamps off on it on the um on the central heating flow pipe and see what temperatures on that pipe but when it goes up and down on the temperature would you be looking towards the more the the plate heat exchanger yeah? or would you say that would be the diverter well the first thing you need to do is as i said you're going to see if you're getting the hot water is it activation so yeah. you run a hot water tap does it activate the boiler so you ask yourself that question if it's no no activation whatsoever yep i would be looking at the divert first and you're going to check to see if the pins moved if it's moved over to the micro switch so the micro switch it's difficult to see that's a micro switch assembly and that's a diverter valve housing you'd have to take the cover off off there and to see the pin move across or you could hear it by running the tap you'd hear the click so what we'll do we'll run the tap now we're going to run the hot tap go and run the hot tap Turn it off, turn it on again, okay turn it off, so we hear the click, that was the micro switch being made by the plunger coming out from the diverter valve, so you, you're saying to yourself well it's clicking, it's making a switch, now if it was still dead after that happening, what would you think, you've heard it click, the water's run, what would you be thinking after that? It's the diverter valve, well you've heard the click and it's working. No, we're saying that we've run the tap, we verified it clicked, mm. but the boiler's still not fired up. So what do you think you'll be thinking after that? It's still not working. I would look at basically, does it, does it got a diaphragm in it or anything like that? It has, but what I'm saying, it made a click. So mm. the diaphragm actually done its job. Right. So, viewers, if you think you know what the answer is, we'd like to hear from you. You can drop us a comment and we'll see if you've got the right answer.